Okay, so hello again, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Um, we have uh, scheduled this webinar, uh, which has been presented by Aldo from Motorola, uh, to walk us through the DLR solution, and um, in, in particular, with respect to how it can be appropriate um, in certain situations for the education vertical. Um, also, some other uh, verticals will be covered as well. Um, look, it's a it's a great product, it's got great potential, and um, we're bringing you this today to, to share it with you and, and hopefully encourage you to go after some of these markets with this particular uh, radio technology. And um, the, the session is being recorded, so if you miss it or you have you have anybody that, um, that misses it, we'll be able to um, view that later on. And without further ado then, we'll, we'll kick over to Aldo and um, get started. Thank you. Over to you, Aldo. Thanks, Jason. Not a problem. Okay, everyone. Uh, so my name's Aldo from Motorola, in case you don't know me. And um, today uh, we're going to look at the uh, DLR1060 radio. We're going to look at some of the features and the benefits of the DLR radio over other <coughs> radio types. And um, we're going to have a look at some of the targeted market opportunities and, and specifically with uh, uh, the education um, will be one that's covered mainly. So, okay, Katie, can we go on to the next slide? So we'd like to touch on some of the key differences um, with the uh, DLR radio. So uh, one of the, the opportunities we see is the biggest opportunity is the fact that this is a license-free operation radio. So there's no requirement for the industry to, to buy a, a license and have administrative uh, and ongoing costs uh, for those licenses. As a license-free radio, we also have the ability to have multiple channels. Now, when we talk about channels in the in the digital radios, we are, often refer them as user groups. So I'll use interchange the word either channels or user groups within the presentation. It's um, being digital, it's quite a secure digital type communication. So assuring that the communications are private and generally interference free. Um, we know in the past, from past experiences, uh, schools were often uh, tried to buy you know, off the shelf blister pack CB type radios. And we all know that there's no real level of privacy there and, and that anyone can sort of join in and interfere on channels. So so that um, is a great uh, benefit with the secure communications. It's actually got quite a good uh, good range, in building range. We're gonna look at the specs shortly, but it uh, works in the 900 meg spectrum. So uh, we get good in building penetration. When we see the picture of the device, it does actually have a little uh, external um, fixed antenna, which uh, gives us good coverage compared to maybe even a UHF uh, product, even though uh, there's no repeater within this system. Uh, one of the other benefits with digital communications is the one-on-one -on -one, uh, call communication. So we can call privately if there's some sensitive issues that need to be discussed and you don't want the whole user group to hear. And really the the uh, where it fits really well into uh, the education system is the simple operation, things that's talk permit tones and voice prompts. And one thing we know uh, when people are not normally in the radio industry and we try to get them to use radios, they can be a little bit taken aback by lots of buttons and things like that. But the fact that these are quite simple to use makes it really good uh, within these um, industries. Okay, Katie. So if we look at the uh, the radio itself, so as I said, six channels or six uh, talk groups uh, can be set up within this uh, radio. It, w it works on the 900 meg sp spread spectrum, uh, the ISM band for the uh, ANZ region. Uh, we got the, the type of range that you'll get is states 23,000 uh, square kilometers, uh, square kilometers, square meters, sorry, <laughs> and uh, up to 18 floors of coverage. So to give you an idea on those sizes, so a lot of the, the big mega superstore floor spaces are typically around eight to uh, 10,000 uh, square meters. And so, sort of re supermarket retail stores are typically around three and a half to uh, 5,000 square meters. So that gives you an opportunity of the type of coverage we'll get with the um, this radio. Quite a good battery life, uh, being digital, it's uh, 15 hours uh, battery life for the 5590 uh, duty cycle. It's uh, IP52 rated, so dust protected and dripping water. So again, it's not, not designed to go out into, uh, into high industrial areas uh, and, and out in the weather. Generally, these people, retail, hospitality or education, a lot of them are all indoors. But yes, obviously, we uh, can take them outdoors. And as long as we uh, don't get them sopping wet, they should be pretty good. And also the uh, output power, uh, 0.75 of a watt. Uh, these devices do actually have a 
uh, an internal speaker. Uh, unlike some of the uh, uh, something like the the CLP, uh, they do have an um, external speaker. Uh, sorry, an internal speaker, but they can quite easily be used with uh, uh, different audio accessories um, from be it from an RSM to a surveillance type accessory, and we'll see some of those um, on the next few slides. Okay, Katie. So I think here the uh, call features are, are the big things we need to cover off. So. Like any other radio, we do the standard group call. That's the fundamental uh, function of that radio. We do have the ability to do a private reply. So if someone sets up a group call, we can program a button and they will actually talk back privately after that group transmission's finished. So we can find a user and talk privately to them. A button or a program or a channel can be programmed for direct call. So if we have a, a specific person within our organization that needs to be uh, contacted directly, if we talk about the education system, whether that's a, 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 a principal or, a, or the front office staff or whatever, they can be set up as a direct call functionality. Because we have multiple channels, we uh, have users spread across different channels, we have the ability to do a group call to all users, um, assuming they're not currently on a call within their own channel. And um, then the, any user can talk back uh, to uh, that channel. Or conversely, if we don't know where a user is, we can use a feature like page all available, where again, it still goes out on all channels. It is a one-way group call. And normally the user that we wish we target in would uh, do a uh, talk back and they do a private reply and we talk back privately from there. Also, if there's a requirement to, uh, if you, someone's talking to you and you don't want to hear the radio traffic, you can mute your radio uh, quite quickly and easily. Okay, Katie. So if you will look, look, look at the picture here, so basically the radio is uh, pretty fundamental. One of the things, the obvious ones that I've mentioned before is it does have a, an external antenna, therefore that we get quite good coverage within, uh, where even when it's wearing down on the belt. Uh, it's quite a large PTT button that allows us to operate from the uh, radio. Um, there's also an accessory connector that, that allows you to connect, as I said, either an RSM or a surveillance accessory and easy to adjust uh, volume up and down buttons. Um, as I said, the other thing to be wary of is uh, when you do push the push to talk from the front of the radio, it will only enable the front mic on the radio. If you have an accessory in the on the device, you have to do the PTT from the accessory to enable the microphone at the accessory. Okay, next slide. So if you look at the uh, accessories that are available for the uh, SLR, so first of all, uh, there's a holster to carry the radio around. Uh, the asterisk indicates there that it's actually included in the radio when you order the radio, it comes with a holster. There's a single unit charger available. Now that is an order option because a lot of these may be ordered in, in bulk and a lot of people would generally go for a multi-unit uh, option. Uh, so we actually don't include a single unit charger by default. If you want a single unit charger, it's an order option. As mentioned, there is a multi-unit 12 bay charger. Uh, the front six pockets will do a radio uh, or if you take the battery out, it can do a battery on its own. The back six pockets are for radio only. Uh, remote speaker mic is available and two different types of uh, surveillance accessories, one with a um, over the ear and one with an in-ear type device. The battery is the uh, BT90 battery. You guys are familiar with our other products such as the, the SL4010 and the SL2600. That similar type of battery uh, is in the radio. It's a uh, 1800 milliamp hour. And yes, the battery obviously is also included in the purchase of the radio. Okay, next slide. So I guess here what we want to show uh, first and foremost is the slide is the potential for the education market in both um, Australia and New Zealand. Uh, as you would have heard, if you're part of the Motorola Solutions uh, program, uh, there were huge and, and viable opportunities for your business that is outside your normal place of business that you might sell into. So this is an opportunity where you may not have looked in the past uh, for many reasons, be it for um, the, the, we never had a product that would uh, be suitable for that market. Um, COVID has affected a lot of different verticals, uh, but schools will always constantly be growing as long as there's always a growing population. Um, revenue generated just in public schools alone in, in Australia is almost about $3 billion and, and the, with over 4 million students in ANZ that require constant coordination and safety of those uh, students. So we and, and, and ACE would like to continue working with you to help you tap into this market as one of many verticals and we a handful of features 
the DLRs most suitable for for schools are like program um, for schools like any other organisation. They often have small budgets, novice, novice users, but they still require multiple channels to manage different streams of activity. Uh, like any other organisation, it requires to be uh, easy, reliable, and uh, cost effective. Today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through a few scenarios with DLR and how it can be used and how the DLR can help mitigate common everyday risks in a school environment, whilst also ensuring that teachers and staff can uphold their duty of care to their students. Okay, okay can we go to the next slide? Okay, so in this uh, scenario here, we have a, a, a student uh, so on site here at the school. The student has fallen during a teacher's shift while they're on yard duty. Um, the student falls over and badly injures themselves. Uh, there's not a uh, they're not located near the sick bay and they can't leave the injured student alone unattended. So how would the teacher in this situation uh, tend to this uh, while still upholding their duty of care to look after the student? So if we look at the next slide, we could cover it off how this uh, could play out with a DLR. So we could set up a, a situation where the teacher on yard duty will call for assistance, say on, on a program teacher's channel. Another teacher would reply and confirm that they're on their way to help out with this situation. A yard duty teacher would at, could at any time do a page all if she wants to find if there's a dedicated first aid officer or something like that, find out where that first aid officer. First aid officer will do a private reply because we don't want everyone on the, on the, uh, on the channel to be necessarily to hear what's going on. Uh, and they would come to the scene. The first aid officer could potentially uh, have a button program for direct call to the office reception and they will contact that uh, office reception. Uh, the office reception could then prepare the sick bay or call an ambulance and then report back that, uh, that they're ready to go and they've got the sick bay ready and then an ambulance has been called. So as you can see, th this could allow, now this could normally happen just on a, on a single channel. You could have everyone using one channel, but as you can see, for some reason, there would be benefits in being able to separate the users off so that uh, not everyone hears every single conversation within that system. So let's look at another scenario within the school. So scenario two is uh, offsite. So one of the things that's uh, important to understand here is because we have a license free radio, we can actually take this offsite and use it anywhere we like. Opposed to if we were to use a, a license type radio, generally you are licensing that device for a particular area. So this is a great opportunity to take these offsite. So student being walked uh, to the local swimming pool for their local sports day. They're walking in pairs with a volunteer and teachers uh, either at the front or the end of the queue while walking them to the um, event. Um, if there's someone uh, uh, lagging behind or the, someone's fallen over and uh, we need to get in contact with other people within that, with that line to, to let them know what's, what's going on and to wait up or something like that, uh, we can, have that situation, how can we uh, get that communication through to those staff members? So if we look at the next slide. So first of all, as I said, a lot of schools would go through uh, and have volunteers during these uh, during these events and they have a lot of uh, volunteers who probably have never used radios before. So the fact that these radios are quite easy to operate, uh, they allow new staff members or volunteers to pick up the radio and be able to start communicating quite quickly. I mean, we have voice prompts that identify what the operational channel is. So it does actually announce, if you call it the um, excursion channel, however you wanna call it, that will be announced on the channel. And some, something as simple as talk permit tones just lets the user know that they can, they can the channel's free to go and that they are able to talk uh, once they've hit that push to talk button. So these simple operations allow for the school excursion, uh, like a school excursion channel will allow them to coordinate activities between the teachers and the volunteers and ensure that all the students right from the front to the back of the queue are all supervised and, and everyone knows what's going on within that scenario. Okay, so the benefits of going off-site uh, are highlighted here. Okay, okay. So emergency scenarios, uh, an intruder may have entered the school grounds. Little is known about the situation, uh, such as who, who they are, and whether they are alone or, or should they be there. How could teachers be uh, quietly alerted and students organized to remain safe? Now, unfortunately in our schools at the moment, uh, there, we do have um, the, problem where uh, be it a disgruntled parent uh, with, with separation between families and, and lots of different reasons why someone might be at the school that shouldn't be. So how would we handle that scenario? Okay, so in the emergency scenario, again, 
if they're set up this way, a uh, teacher could do a direct call to office reception, just querying, hey, who's on site? Who should be on site? Do we know? Office reception can do a private call to a principal to inform them of the situation. And they say, well, no, we don't know of anyone that should be on the school grounds. So a principal may request that the reception uh, ring the school bell to alert to, uh, everyone gets back to class if they're not already in class, mind you. Um, the principal then may do a, a call all uh, to inform everyone to initiate a school lockdown procedure. Um, in the meantime, the uh, office reception could contact the police and the teachers could actually still now still communicate on their teacher's channel and uh, coordinate this lockdown procedure. All schools have these, these procedures that they go through and this would just make it simple. And as you can see, everyone can still be informed, the right people are uh, dealing with the right situation and not everyone on the same channel hearing all the uh, chaos or commotion. Uh, so it's quite good in that scenario. So next slide. So there are other different school situations, not just those three scenarios, things such as after school care, making sure that when, you know, when teachers send the children out after, after school care, they can be in touch with the after school, school care people to ensure that the, the students have arrived at that area. After school care often would have uh, school activities and again, they can be supervised and, and kept in contact through uh, during the school activities. Pick up and drop off areas. Anyone that's had children that's ever had to deal with these uh, situations understand that the uh, it can be quite dangerous. Kids running around everywhere, parents in cars and things like that. So all this could be coordinated uh, with radios, with teachers uh, at either end of the, uh, the drop off areas. Schools, just like a lot of businesses, uh, do have fire drills. So again, uh, the, the fire drills or even lockdown procedures, they can go through those, they use those radios in those situations so they, they make sure all the right staff are in touch with each other and everyone knows what's happening within those fire drills or those um, lockdowns. School fates or school fairs, um, again, it's uh, something that you could use, seeing as you've got the radios there, if you need to, uh, uh, again, do that supervision uh, of, of students and, and, and making sure that there are enough sausages for the barbecue, etc. all those sorts of things, uh, they can be used in those uh, environments. And uh, we all know, and as I mentioned before, the uh, off-site off activities such as camps, sports days and other things, uh, the Licence 3 radios can be used anywhere uh, and generally uh, they are you know, able to be used without much fear of, of having interference from other people joining the channel that shouldn't be there, etc. So that covers off a lot of the areas within the, the school opportunity. Now we know uh, DLR is, is not just in that, this is just a market that we see a good opportunity to. Um, so we'll talk about uh, on the next slide, we'll talk about some other uh, opportunities uh, in the for the DLR product. Again, because of its ease, ease of use and, and, and able to have that coordination amongst different users and di on different channels, uh, it could be used in that hospitality or, 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 or restaurant type environment where you know you have uh, people at, at, at the front um, uh, or staff at the front greeting people and then you might you know say, oh, I, table for four, have you got anything available? They could call the wait staff and find out, is there a table available or how long will it be before a table's cleared and available for them? Um, if there's any problem with uh, any of the service or manager needs to be informed or if there's a, 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 an upset client or something like that, we could contact the managers. Um, the efficiency of having been able to notify servers or, or drink staff or people like that to say, hey, these meals are ready, etc. So it just uh, it speeds up that whole process and, and gives a better experience for the uh, customer. And I don't know where I dine. I don't actually have valet parking. I probably couldn't afford it. But uh, yeah, if they if they have that sort of service again, you could have their car picked up and um, and are ready to go as soon as uh, as soon as you're uh, at the door. Uh, another example. Uh, next slide, Kenny. So we could talk about uh, a little bit in the retail space. So um, you know, you can give the uh, retail customer a better experience with more uh, direct communication with the staff. So cashiers can get uh, price checks, or you know, for if a barcode doesn't scan or doesn't scan or it scans a, a price, and the customer thinks, oh, that's not the price that was on the shelf, etc. They can get their staff to check that uh, that shelf price and make sure it matches up. Um, if we need different departments, be it, I don't know, to, uh, the toy section or the, the uh, women's clothing or men's clothing, whatever it is, if they, someone needs to talk to other members within that, or if you need to get a member out of that group and bring them over, that, that's quite quiet, we need to get, get them over to toys or things like that. Again, you can talk, uh, talk out to all channels and have users come across. Managers can make direct calls to staff members if they request backup support. 
And a lot of stores these days do have uh, their own sort of security, uh, especially after hours uh, or, or the late uh, evening shopping. So they can uh, give this potentially to a security guard that still is able to talk to uh, uh, other managers or other staff members within the store. So as you can see, there's, there's opportunities, uh, not just in the education system, but uh, they're the ones that we, we see a lot of benefit, but obviously hospitality and retail uh, are other areas where we could um, utilise this product. Okay, um, that pretty much finishes up in that aspect, but we'll have a look a little bit about just some detail. So things such as um, programming software, uh, this is available from uh, the Yace Service uh, Department, so you, uh, contact details are there. Just wanna put up, um, it, if some of you people would uh, deal with both the uh, CLP product uh, in the past and the and you're now looking at the DLR product. So just note that the, the CPS that we, the latest version of CPS version 4.0 is suitable for both products, the DLR and the CLP. So you don't have to have different uh, CPSs, it'll do both. Uh, to do the programming of the uh, DLRs, it does require a, a programming cable, then there's the part number listed there. Now this uh, cable can also be used for both the DLR and the CLP. Now note that these cables do plug into the uh, into the single bay charger to uh, allow the, the programming of, of those devices or, or a cradle, so to speak. And it's just a, um, a, both cradles, both the CLP and the DLR use the micro USB, so it can be uh, used in that manner. However, so that's the new cable. However, if you have an old CLP programming cable, the part number shown there, uh, unfortunately that cable does not support the programming of, of uh, the DLRs. So if you get the newer cable, you can do both. If you've got the um, older CLP cable, unfortunately you can't program the DLR with that one. Okay, so with all that information now, it's really just um, some question time. So I'm not sure who's monitoring the questions, Katie or Jason, is there any questions that have come up in during this meeting? Uh, we've got one question from, well, a couple of questions from Jim. Um, he said with the programming for the button settings, uh, is that done via the programming software or via the radios themselves by default? And do they work out of the box without programming of any kind? So the answer to both those questions are yes. I'll go into a little more detail. So, so there is um, there is programming that can be done with the uh, CPS to allow you to configure your your groups. And again, I said made reference to being able to give the channels channel names and all that. So that's all done by going in and programming via the um, the, the programming software. Um, the there is a level of programming that can be done from the from the radio, uh, but obviously that's uh, without, I, I don't know exactly all the details, but it's definitely shown in the in the user manual that allows you to do those fields. Uh, they would generally be some uh, adjustment or changes that you could do. You would do the main programming in the in the um, in the CPS, but yes, there is programming capability from the radio. And sorry, what was the final one? Oh, can they be used out of the, straight out of the box? Uh, yes, they could be used uh, straight out of the box, uh, but as I said, they'll, it'll just be announced as channel one, channel two, etc. And um, the default programming of the top button is uh, private reply. So you could use it out of the box and also be able to um, do more customized uh, version of it. Just one thing that's uh, important to understand is that um, we do, the radio does do it through what we call uh, a spread spectrum and, and frequency hopping. So um, we have a functionality, uh, a setting within the radio called profile ID. And generally what you would do is you would give a customer a, a unique profile ID. And the idea of that is if you go into, um, uh, or whether there's a, uh, if, if we're talking in the retail space, but if, if you go, go to two retail outlets and they're in the same shopping centre, right, you don't want uh, them to get cross-talk amongst each other. So you give them a different profile ID, therefore they would skip and hop through different channels so there wouldn't be a, um, a, a clash in that uh, scenario. So out of the box, they're all going to be defaulted to the same. Okay, uh, another question here. Is it a Motorola two-pin connector like the DEP450 or a single pin? It's similar to a DEP 450. However, we don't recommend, we, we have the accessories that are listed, uh, the approved accessories for that 
device. So I don't know what would happen if you would plug a DEP450 RSM into the radio. It probably, it may or may not work, but that's not the the certified accessory. The the part number uh, of the uh, RSM will be potentially for that. I, I'd need to check if it's one and the same, but it's the two pin. I've also got, can we confirm the distance slash coverage of these? Um, so as I said, the, 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 that does depend on a lot of things. The environmental factors, are, are we talking through buildings, across buildings and concrete things? They are 900 meg, so uh, they have good build, in-building penetration. And the examples we gave earlier was, we said it was 23,000 uh, square metres that it does cover cover and a, a large uh, mega store generally that like might attend and those sorts of stores they would be potentially what did I say I think I said about 8,000 so and when we're talking about if we're talking about uh, in a multi-level complex there was a reference to I think eight floors or ten floors uh, in that like any like anything though it's always best to do a coverage test before you uh, as a proof of concept that it will work in the in the environment required we always recommend that whether the licensed or unlicensed radio, as you always should be doing a coverage test. Um, I've also got another one asking, how many DLR radio models are available? So uh, the good old internet can be a little bit confusing. So in other regions, there are different models. We only have one model, it's the DLR 1060, and it's a six channel. In the U US or in, in uh, America regions, they do have a two channel version of this. We are not introducing the two channel version, just the six channel DLR 1060. Um, also, will there be a six way multi charger available or only the 12 way? No, only, only the 12 way. Um, has any range testing been performed compared to traditional UHF two-way? So we, we've we done a uh, comparison with the CLP radio, which are both one watt uh, devices. So we actually had some pretty good results with the um, DLR compared to the, the CLP. And I think a lot of that has to do with the CLP. CLP has a internal antenna and when it's worn down low on the body, it, it's obviously gets compromised a little bit with, with coverage because the DLR has a um, ex external uh, antenna, uh, external mounted antenna. It's fixed, but it's external mounted. Uh, we, we had pretty good results compared to the CLP at the same power level. Better results. Okay, um, any interference issues in the ISM band? Well, the ISM band is the, the uh, 2.4, 2 is it? I, I think off the top of your head. Uh, like anything, there's going to be, there's potential going to be a lot of uh, free spectrum. It's an unlicensed uh, spectrum. So there, there could be potential, but um, again, with the profile ID, if, if you see any, any problems in that, you can change the profile ID, which would uh, give you different uh, skips to different channels. Okay. Um, continuing on from that same question, tools for identifying any interference in the area? Well, some sort of uh, spectrum analyzer to measure that, but you're going to get a lot of you're going to get a lot of um, spectrum in in that free unlicensed band. Uh, so you're going to get a lot of activity in that unlicensed band. So if you've got a specific area that that could be investigated, I guess, but I'm not sure. I don't I don't play in the in the in the uh, network. Uh, sorry, in the um, spectrum uh, analyzer space with the the um, different equipment used in those spectrum analyzers. Sorry. Um, and one more for now. Uh, they have other 900 megahertz devices that have noticed some interference from Optus cell towers on certain channels. Has that been seen in the field yet with these? So, so again, the, the ISM spectrum. So, so we had to, the, the, this radio is different to the US model radio because the US model has about, uh, I think it's five or 10 extra meg of spectrum. These had to be uh, reduced in their spectrum in that 900 meg so that it wouldn't interfere with that. So these meet all the ACMA type approvals. We went through a process, as I said, we had to uh, reduce the ISM band that suits the Australian market. So um, it all uh, fits in the uh, free unlicensed ISM band 
that should be outside of the um, carrier band. Okay. Um, has Motorola released a list price for the units? Um, yeah, it's all. Uh, I, I didn't put a price in on there, but yeah, it's. Uh, I'm not. I'm not actually sure of the pricing, but yes, it's, it's. It's. This is released. This has actually has been released since. Uh, uh, I think it was uh, earlier this year. Uh, this is just uh, our opportunity to 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 get some uh, some more exposure to it and uh, and get it out, out there in in the market. So you got um, you can get that price uh, off off Ace. They they would have that that detail. Another one here. Microphone companies like Seinhauser actually have software that uses the mic receiver to look for channel issues. Does Motorola do something similar? I'm not. I'm not aware. No, I'm not aware that we have any. I'm not aware of the Seinhauser one, but I'm. I'm not aware that we have anything in in that space. Uh, were there any other questions for now? Or I think we're all. Just got one more coming up, I think. Um, Sheridan has stated the RRP is 320 excluding GST, just for everyone's information. Um, and then another question, just double checking what was heard earlier. The big PTT button on the front only does internal microphone and the earpiece microphones have to use the earpiece PTT, correct? Yes, that is correct. Okay. I believe that's all of the questions that we've had. Excellent. Thank you very much for uh, allowing me to to present to your to your resellers. And uh, yeah, I hope uh, I've given you enough information. If you have any questions, please forward them through to to Ace. And uh, if there's something that they're, they're not sure about, they'll come to me. I'm happy to uh, share any uh, extra information. Aldo, um, thanks. Thanks so much um, for your time today and for sharing that with everybody. And um, thank, thanks for all who attended. We will be sending a recording of this webinar to everybody along with some uh, supporting information as well. And if, uh, as Aldo said, if you're interested to learn more, um, there we go, Katie's just put the, the contacts up there. Um, reach out to us and, and we'll help you out. So happy hunting and let's hope we can find some, some good opportunities. Thanks, everyone. Good selling. Thank you. Hi, Kelly. Bye-bye.